right. Um, now the. Um, Yes, um, uh, just uh, to go through the main ideas here uh, quickly, um, the, um, um, this paper is mostly interested in, in uh, linguistic uh, implications of uh, uh, rock art, and particularly stelae, which uh, you've just heard about, uh, uh, concentrating on the, uh, the ones in the uh, southwestern Iberian Peninsula, but not entire, entirely. So one of the main... Um, ideas here is that uh, new advances in technology are making detailed and in-depth uh, comparison of widely separated immovable examples of rock art more, more feasible. Now this is about the technology you've heard about and you're going to hear more about it uh, and uh, there's been a lot of interest in it uh, uh, in this conference uh, but I think in particular for, for linguistics uh, we, we're going to be interested in comparability across uh, wide areas and not just r raising up uh, to higher standards with new technology in a particular area or with particular uh, traditions, uh, but uh, both over time, uh, so uh, diachronically through, through periods, tracing continuity, but also where there may be connections over wide areas uh, where uh, migrations and the spread uh, and continuity of, of languages are in question. Um, uh, and the fields of archaeology and, and historical linguistics have for a long time uh, been uh, aware, but largely frustrated uh, in, in attempting to put together the fact that they are, they are studying the same societies in, in the Bronze Age in particular, but other prehistoric societies. They know they're looking at different aspects of the same societies, but putting those together in time and space saying where reconstructed uh, Proto-Indo-European, for example, Proto-Germanic, uh, Proto Proto-Celtic, uh, the other languages that, uh, that are reconstructed very accurately in great, and in great detail, uh, but are not directly attested, where to put those together in time and space with archaeological cultures. This has been very difficult. This, however, has changed uh, for the better rapidly, uh, recently, uh, because of the uh, archaeogenetic uh, revolution uh, of the past a few years, really. 2015 is the key year uh, where uh, evidence for, in ancient DNA for mass migration from the Pontic Caspian steppe uh, now uh, confirms one of the hypotheses or, or major aspects of one of the hypotheses uh, of uh, the spread and origin of the Indo-European languages. Uh, yeah, going back to the Pontic uh, Caspian steppe about 5,000 years ago. Rock art, uh, of the various things that can be used to, to tie in with this new evidence uh, for uh, the spread of, uh, of Indo-European out of the Pontic Caspian steppe and its uh, diversification later on through the course of the, Bron of the Bronze Age, Rock art is a particularly important source of information in giving us uh, uh, details of the ideas uh, uh, and ideology of people, also uh, the, uh, the valued and, and prestigious parts of their material culture represented in the uh, rock art. And they, we also see traditions uh, both uh, vertically over time and widely across Europe that seem to uh, be appearing in areas where uh, we have early uh, Indo-European languages uh, emerging, and now the evidence indicates they were there in later prehistory as well. Uh, and um, I'm just going to go uh, quickly through some um, uh, stones that were, these are uh, stelae, uh, there's some overlap here with, uh, with what Marta diaz just, uh, uh just showed you. Uh, this is the result of field work that was done um, uh, these objects mostly from the, in the Badajoz, in fact, in, entirely in the Badajoz uh, Museum, were scanned about a, a year ago. And um, uh, at any rate, they are uh, late Bronze Age uh, stelae of the, of the type you've heard about in, uh, in Marta Diaz Guadamino's uh, paper just uh, before now. And um, we did uh, uh, 3D uh, scans of them. I also have a printed one here that people can look at in the break reduced to 25% uh, scale. And um, uh, the, um, uh, th this slide shows uh, the, um, this is the uh, Ferro uh, del Santo uh, 
of uh, Stella from the uh, Badajoz region, and it's just, it, you can turn it, uh, but the link didn't work, so I've, rather than uh, actually displaying it on, the, uh, on screen and turning it, I've given you three screenshots to show uh, that this is a, a three-dimensional scan. It can be turned, and potentially it can be turned without having special software by, by doing the whole thing by a, a link on the web. In fact, it works uh, out, outside of this uh, room. It seems to work uh, fine, uh, but uh, it can be manipulated and so on. And I think for the uh, for the perspective that I'm interested in, um, that this can be done is is uh, not news at this point, uh, but uh, that it can be done and that they can be compared with uh, rock art and stellae in other parts of of, of Europe, uh, where we where there are other reasons to think that there are links uh, and uh, possibly linguistic uh, connections going on. Uh, that is of particular interest. And we'll just race through another of couple. This is the uh, La Pimienta, also from the Badajoz uh, region, as well as the Badajoz uh, Museum. And uh, these are the, uh, the standard views from the catalog. And then the um, uh, three-dimensional uh, manipulation of them, having scanned them. And uh, <coughs> this one from Mahata Hondas is particularly of interest. Uh, one, of the, one of the ways in which there is a linguistic connection to these, but one of the most direct ones is that we have, some of them have writing on them uh, as well. And this has uh, an inscription down, which is done in the reverse down at the bottom of this. Chariots are also a key feature because a, a lot of uh, focus on Indo-European civilization and uh, uh, cultural traditions have focused on the, ho the spread of the horse and chariot package uh, as part of it, which is part of the uh, iconography that is not only strong in the Iberian Peninsula in, in that tradition, but also uh, shows close parallels with Scandinavian rock art. Uh, this is the one that we, um, uh, that we have the 25% uh, the, the um, uh, printout of, which you can take a look at, which I think there's a lot of uh, potential here for uh, comparative, not just for experts, but to uh, have a 100% 3D printout in museums in other regions where they have similar things, but it's not practical to bring an Iberian steel uh, to Sweden or what have you, but you can have uh, uh, something that actually is, is perishable that well, uh, school children can touch and so on. Uh, as well as being an exact repl replica. And um, in the interest of time, I will just go through these more, more of the same <coughs> sort of thing, um, also from the Badajoz region. Shields, in, in, this one is uh, Utia, I find particularly interesting in that you get the back of the shield. You get similar shields in the Scandinavian uh, tradition of rock art, uh, but you, the shield is, is in those examples, I've never seen one that is obviously from the back where you're seeing the shield grip, uh, but this is uh, fairly common in the Iberian tradition and the uh, different positions of that. And uh, another one with a, a conspicuous shield as in the central uh, in the um, uh, La Sol Solonia, uh, central in the, um, uh, in the uh, design of it, a uh, figure with a uh, spear and a large uh, sword and, uh, and again a chariot an important uh, component in this tradition now um, one of the things that when you start comparing um, uh, the uh, rock art traditions from different regions of Europe and I've, I've been particularly interested in comparing the Scandinavian tradition uh, with the uh, Iberian one at the same period uh, uh, mostly the late Bronze Age the sort of about 1300 to 900, 800 BC, something like that, is that you get a lot of the same iconography and sometimes represented in very uh, similar ways, uh, such as uh, the bow and arrow uh, here. And uh, as it becomes clearer that we, um, as to which languages we much, must be dealing with in these areas, you can start to put this together with uh, the Indo-European words and or the words of other reconstructed uh, post-Proto-Indo-European languages, such as the bow and arrow uh, iconography, which is very similar in the way it's represented in Scandinavia and, uh, and in the Iberian uh, stellae tradition, uh, with the double uh, flex in the bow, the, the position of the arrow always shown the same, 
uh, the bowstring not shown drawn back, but uh, always straight down. Um, they probably have the same word for this, because we find in, in the Germanic, Celtic, and Italic languages, so the Western and Northwestern Indo-European, they are the only group that have the same word for, for bow and arrow. It's arrow in Germanic, and it's bow in uh, Celtic and, uh, and uh, Italic. Might mean arrow in, in Celtic, too. And um, so you can see these um, you know, potentially uh, lined up with uh, studies of the, uh, uh, the Indo-European and Proto-Celtic, Proto-Germanic vocabulary and so on. And uh, as well as um, tying this in with reconstructed languages, you can also see this in the early um, sort of honorific names that uh, the peoples have in, uh, uh, in these areas. So heavily in the Western Iberian Peninsula, again, one of the pre-Roman uh, names that is most common, both uh, from this feminine as well as the masculine form of, uh, of this name is Arqueus, meaning the archer, which has been recognized as a Celtic name meaning the archer for over a hundred years, but people tended to forget about it. And now we have scores of examples of this name. This is, this is only a fraction of them that we have here. Most heavily, as you see it, is in the Iberian Peninsula, the, uh, sorry, the western part of the Iberian Peninsula. So Portugal and western Spain, though you do have, also have it in the east and uh, around Tharagotha in the um, Celtiberian uh, area. So very widespread. Otherwise, it has died out in, in the Celtic languages, which is not all that surprising considering that archery itself died out in the Bronze Age in Britain and Ireland. So if we have it in the Beaker period, it go, goes on in the early Bronze Age, but it disappears and the word disappears uh, as well. But you have it, uh, archery survives. Now, um, a few things uh, that are strong in uh, the, um, uh, uh, the second millennium BC, the Bronze Age, uh, in the uh, post -Indo proto-Indo-European stage after the languages and the people have evidently spread out from the Pontic Caspian steppes are the spread of, uh, of tin bronze as the main uh, material for weapons, um, uh, ornaments, and tools, uh, uh, advanced seafaring, and, uh, and the horse and chariot package. These are three, three things that are very important in the rise of the Bronze Age out of the, uh, of the period uh, of, the, uh, of the spread of population, the Pontic uh, Caspian steppes. Uh, and they are all reflected in, uh, uh, in the rock art and, and stelae of, of the Bronze Age. Uh, and so the, these sort of post-proto-Indo-European processes of the Indo-European Bronze Age are, are clearly reflected in the, in the rock art of, um, uh, of more than one region, Scandinavia and the Iberian Peninsula in particular. And one of them, the horse and chariot package, um, we have horses and wheeled vehicles already in Proto-Indo-European. You can see this in the culture of the Pontic Caspian Steppe. You can also see it in the vocabulary that is shared by all of the Indo-European languages. But some of the more advanced uh, parts of it, such as the spokes of the wheel, uh, are not part of the common vocabulary. And uh, at any rate, um, the horse and chariot package is, is reflected in very similar, the, the one on the center bottom is from Franarp in, in Sweden. Uh, then you have the, uh, one, another one from the uh, uh, Badajoz region uh, and on the top from uh, Ategua in, uh, in southern Spain. And uh, the way that the, the wheels, the spokes, uh, the horse team are represented, and very unnaturalistic features are repeated be between the two traditions. And this, you know, this can't be accidental. You're not just talking about the idea of a horse, uh, two horses and a chariot, being repeated in the tr two traditions. You're being taught. You're seeing the the same kind of unnaturalistic conventions, representational conventions, recurring in both the Iberian Peninsula and in the. Um, and in Scandinavia, and again, there is common vocabulary. So we can be pretty certain about the words that are being used to represent uh, the, the various elements of this. Uh, and one of the, and I'll, I'll be finishing up near here. So uh, yes, uh, the, um, uh, it has been suggested that the, the stelae of the Pontic Caspian steppe region is actually 
the work of Proto-Indo-European. So the ones uh, from the Ukraine that you have over on the, um, uh, on the extreme, I guess it's your right of the screen, is um, uh, this has been, you know, and I think the, the argument is pretty good. It hasn't been rejected. Uh, this is representing the culture and iconography of the Indo-Europeans, also the way the, the burial context. And you get very similar forms and repetitions. You know, this is a Middle Bronze Age uh, stela from, from uh, the Alentejo uh, region uh, near uh, Beja. Uh, uh, on the other side of the screen, uh, you get very, the, again, the elements are very uh, similar. And this potentially has to do with something we can now link up with uh, migrations of peoples that we know are uh, the people of steppe ancestry are connected with the, the Stella from the uh, from South Portugal on the uh, uh, on the left side of the screen, and uh, finally, uh, I'll stop it here. This is um, um, uh, we also have a con uh, continuity uh, and in some cases uh, revival of burial customs associated with these Stella and both uh, Stella in both the uh, Pontic Caspian steppes where you have it over on the left side of the screen, and the, uh, the Middle Bronze Age ones uh, from uh, uh, South Portugal uh, and environs, uh, where you also have the, the kist. Uh, often, often you have the stellas then put face down over the top of the kist burial. And then finally, in, uh, on, the, on the far side of the right side of the screen, uh, you have the Gomesh Irish um, uh, Stella from the early Iron Age with writing on it. So, uh, and that is, uh, again, uh, a very similar kind of burial context, uh, very uh, similar kind of uh, circular monument on the, on the surface. And all of, so the, it's possible to trace all the way back to the Pontic Caspian steppes elements of this that you actually get recorded languages at the end of the process. And I'll, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you.